All week long on site at Oakmont Country Club for Golf Central Live from the U.S. Open. And you can see him live from the U.S. Open on Golf Channel immediately following live coverage of the U.S. Open throughout the week. He is Frank Nabilo here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Frank? Very good, thanks. Yeah, just uh, trying to duck the rain at the moment, but um, I heard your little Godfather piece there. What do you think, Frank? Who doesn't like the Godfather? I mean, well, it, we all do like it, but LeBron says he, he's been watching it six times throughout the playoffs to keep his mind straight, and when, was, when he was asked to sing a line from the Godfather, he couldn't name one. Well, yeah, there's, there's not a character he could play on it either. But uh, it was El Pacino at his best, wasn't it? He no, it wasn't even going to get the role originally. No, it's true. It's, but James Caan was reading for that role at some point. Mm. Look at us talking for Godfather. I didn't think we'd be discussing that at all with Oakmont. How how is this course setting up from your vantage point, Frank? Um, it, it's you know it's a shame. Whenever we seem to go to like what you would consider the nearest thing to a perfect venue, we always seem to be affected with with weather. And I think that's what it is. You know, this is the ninth time that Oakmont's hosted a U.S. Open, and and it's regarded as the toughest, the fairest, toughest golf course in the world. Um, you probably put the tough part before the fair and that, obviously, to sort of qualify it. But uh, it, it's straight up hard. It has been um, ever since it was built in the early 1900s. Every U.S. Open it's had, people have said it's tough. But people never normally complain and go, oh, that's ridiculous. So it just has this reputation of just being an absolute bear. But it, it defines a, the championship. This is a quintessential U.S. Open uh, whenever it's held here. So, and you, your best open finish of your career was at Oakmont in 94. You and you, you finished in the top 10 of that, of that open. How is the weather going to affect the rain delay that happened this morning? Just Not just today, but the rest of the week, in your estimation. Um yeah, it changes the strategy. Sadly, uh, you know, I was here a week ago and it also rained there, so that they don't quite, they're never going to get the firm sort of fast Oakmont that they want, but um, it, it's it's going to affect the golf course in the sense, obviously, it's going to make it longer. It's actually going to make the rough more penal. Now, people would normally say on a PGA Tour event, soft conditions, they would shoot nothing. And I know Andrew Landry right now is, you know, like five under through 13. You know, he's a rookie on the PGA Tour. Um, you know, you, you can't get fixated with that. Yes, yeah, someone will always decode, you know, whatever's going on right now. But it's going to trick some people up because you do all your preparation expecting the greens to be lightning, the ball to bounce forward, uh, the rough to be playable. And now the rough, is, rough has to be avoided, even more so than before. And the problem now is trying to figure out whether the ball will spin back or not. So it's a different set of uh, parameters for the players. But, you know, if we don't get any more rain the rest of the week, and it's fine. It's slowly going to firm up, and it's and it, by Sunday it'll 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 be the way it should be. But at the moment, it's a little bit of a guessing game for the for the top players or the name players out there right now. Three-time Presidents Cup member and current Golf Channel analyst Frank Nabilo joining me here. So, who do you like to win this thing, Frank? Um, I, I thought it was going to be the usual suspects. Uh, you know, we would we were obviously fixated on the top three in golf, and that's Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth. And Jason Day, you know, uh, a couple of you know names just to throw there. Kevin Chappell, who had had um, three runner-up finishes this week, just made just under three million dollars. If you were looking for like really dark horses, sure. he played well in a couple of U.S. Opens. But he, I would I would have been surprised given normal conditions if the winner came outside the top ten or fifteen players in the world. But now with this, there's a little bit of a curveball. I think today's even more important. It's very easy to blow yourself out of the event just today because you, the guys in the afternoon are going to get the delay. Some of them aren't going to finish. They could get caught. It could work in their favour. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this sort of next 24 hours wash out for the for the first round. Yes, yeah, another weather delay just right now. It happened, uh, Frank. So. So you think there's going to be some people that tee off later today and going to have to play rest of round one tomorrow and then round two tomorrow as well, huh? Yeah, but that that actually that actually could play out in their advantage. You know, this it's not like Wimbledon or whatever. We get rained out. You and I are playing each other, and we come out. We're going to play the same conditions. So this can actually work for them, or, or obviously it can work against them. I know that sounds like, you know, obviously that's not, not exactly the smartest thing in the world, but it's amazing how these guys that are playing right now are going to trudge through the weather all day long, whereas if you get a break, you play late this afternoon in, in what would you would consider favourable conditions, a relatively soft Oakmont, and almost get the same conditions tomorrow. Then it starts to firm out, so the guys that play all day long today now have a firmer golf course. And, and they can feel like they're on the wrong side of the draw. How, what do you make of this kid, DeChambeau, Bryson DeChambeau, with a single plane swing and, and how, uh, how, how it's, you know, old school but newfangled all at the same time? 
I find it really intriguing. You know, I, I think golf, uh, you know, we got just locked into this thing that, you know, everybody just kept quoting history, you know, Henry Cotton and Varden and all that. And I'm like, we're the one game that's not pushing forward. And, and you know, uh, uh, in Pittsburgh, obviously, they just you know won the hockey, the Stanley Cup. And, and you watch athletes just keep progressing. And so I think Bryson's a breath of fresh air. I don't agree with everything he does, but... You know, he's a little bit of throwback in the sense that he's prepared to do it his own way. You know, so that that means he's brave, and I think I think some people will benefit from it because it'll make some of the the, the next generation again go, "Hey, I'm allowed to do what I want," and, and I think that's refreshing for golf. Speaking of the cup, was it true that it came to Oakmont as well? Did you see it? Um, there's a rumor that I, you know I was walking around the city here yesterday. I've got to go out in about an hour or so, and every every person was dressed in penguins outfit. And I like you know, I had hit myself. That's right. I go. That's right. They won the Stanley Cup. Um, right. There was a few. Put it that way. There was a few. <laughs> Have you hit the Primani brothers, Frank? Did you get one of those sandwiches? Uh, no, no. I've got to. I've got to stay away from that. I mean, you know, I, I weigh like 400 pounds when I leave. If I keep, if I eat that stuff, well, yeah, you, so you, I'm you trying make, to actually be. Sort of <laughs> let me just give you a little, a little a little help here, though. You you can make an exception. You should do that. There's not many. Yeah, do, I might do it once. I have a friend that I meant. Our show's on from eight to ten tonight. I'm meant to be meeting a friend for eleven. I just said we'll just go for a drink, but you know, you never know. You should. I mean, there's not many U.S. Open venues where you can go get a like a Primanti Brothers something like that. You should take advantage right. of that. You should. This is a good town. There's no two ways about it. It's a good town. So. How do the rest of the players view P Phil Mickelson's off-course issues, Frank? How, what's the scuttlebutt when you're hearing players talk about Phil? Um, I think, once again, it shows that the PGA Tour, there's a lack of transparency. Um, you know, if you compare our sport with what's happened in tennis, Sharapova getting the suspension, I think people generally now go, we'd like to know what's going on. And I think we're moving closer to that. Um, so I think, you know, people are wondering, is he going to be suspended? Um, is he clear? Uh, we'll never know because no one said anything. Now, when they say nothing, it means that it could be pending an appeal. And, and that's the problem is that lack of transparency. It, it, it's in the bylaws of, of when you become a member on the PGA Tour, if you have an association with a known gambler, that's a suspension. So the fact that no one's saying anything about it may, you know, makes you think that he's pending an appeal. And, and that's the problem. Um, it's it, he has broken a PGA Tour rule. So what is the issue? Is it you think that the PGA Tour doesn't want to suspend somebody as famous as him, or there is just a uh, a a player discipline issue in general in the PGA Tour, where every other sport seems to be struggling with that subject? Certainly, like the NFL. Correct. Yeah, I, I think it's all of those. You know, I was just in in Europe um, covering their tour for a couple of weeks, the Irish Open, where Rory won, and their flagship event, the BMW PGA. And I actually did a piece on transparency, like slow play, for example. They name the offenders. It's publicised. It's not done on the PGA tour. So, you know, I, I just think that whenever whenever we don't get ahead of it, and you know, if you want the next generation, I keep harping on that because I, I think we do have a really good future in this game then I think you've got to come out in the open more and say, yeah, this is this is the way we're handling it. And right now he has put an appeal in, and that's why he's not suspended. Then you know either that or you say, no, we haven't suspended him. This is the reason why he's satisfied X, Y, and Z. I don't think you do Mickelson or the tour a favor by saying nothing. Lastly for you then, Frank, so you think it's still going to be one of the uh, trio of McElroy, Day, Spieth? What about Johnson? What about Dustin Johnson, where everyone's waiting for him to break through? Yeah, he's the empathetic pick. There's no two ways about it. Six uh, top fives in his last nine starts. And you would think a soft golf course, um, he, he has to, he's playing so well. The only thing he hasn't done this year is win. Um, he seems to have that convenient memory or, or lack of, um, whichever way, which actually should work well here. I mean, he's strong as an ox and he's playing well. So, yeah, I would put him in. You know, I think the Bubba Watsons of the world, you know, Bubba probably isn't going to be happy with the golf course because there's going to be too many variables for him. But... Um, yeah, like I said, I, I think anyone on the, the I, I was I would have been surprised if it's outside the top ten or fifteen players in the world that that uh, you know, if, if someone outside that actually won this year. Frank, will be it's too good a golf course. Thank you for calling in. We'll check you out on the Golf Channel after uh, after the event every single day, and then of course Golf Central Live from the U.S. Open. Thanks for joining. Yes, appreciate it. You bet. That's Frank Nabilo. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.